Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I wanted to tell a story about my most epic gaming moment. The coolest thing that has ever happened to me in my entire history of playing video games and one of the things that hooked me on games and kept me on games until today. It's something that I'm still passionate about, so this is a moment that I wanted to share with you. The gameplay you're seeing right now is Black Ops 3. I'm going to be playing with the Shiva semi-automatic. Don't have any of the good attachments yet, just leveling up, but going to play well. And I wish that I could play the Halo Master Chief Collection to get some gameplay for this because this is a Halo story, but I never bought the Halo Master Chief Collection. I was going to get it the day it came out, but it was so buggy and so messy, and I kept waiting. I'm like, you know, next week maybe they'll have the bugs fixed, and I'll buy it then. Maybe next month they'll have the bugs fixed, and I'll buy it then. And it just turned into not being fixed, so I just kind of quit caring. But this is a Halo story, and you're going to need to rewind the times all the way back to January 2005. Halo 2 had just come out. It dominated the console gaming scene. Xbox just went up and up and up in value compared to the PlayStation, it was the killer app. It was the number one shooter. Strats were going down, and I was clanning at this time. I was running a clan at the time with a really embarrassing name that I'm not going to say on the video, but if my old clan mates are out there, they can type it in the description. And we were doing practice. Uh, we did big. We were hoping that we would have big team clan battles in the future because I was all about big team battles. So we would party up as a clan and do big team battles. Silly, I know, but we did a practice big team battle on Headlong, which, if you remember, it's the map with the broken bridge, and you could jump the warthog over the beam that would kind of wobble and jump the bridge and get the sniper and you had the the eye beam that goes across the middle of the map it was one of the biggest maps in the game we're playing one flag ctf so we have to take turns trying to score and my clan and i were among the first teams to, to figure out that you could do this weird little jump over a mini bridge with the warthog not the big one but you could do that jump and then drive up the stairs and you can drive a goss hog or a regular hog directly into the enemy base this was by far my favorite strategy it now getting stuck was a risk and and we did occasionally get hit by rockets or somebody would hit us with a sticky grenade or we'd get rolled by a brute shot but we could do it so fast i could have a warthog inside in a place where it wasn't supposed to be in less than 15 seconds so it very rarely happened and i thought that the risk was worth it because usually i would splatter two or three people and set up an insta kill turret inside the base and we get the flag and score in no time and the first time i did this trick on the enemy team it worked like a charm we scored super fast the second and third times not so much and we played a long and hard game against this enemy team it was 8v8 I'm just doing a little bit of setup here and uh, we came down to the last round and uh, it goes all the way into overtime we have the opportunity to score the last flag and win the game I decided to go risky again and take our fourth warthog into the base it did not work at all the minute I went up the stairs and rounded the corner my team got hit by rockets the other guy got picked off everybody we all just got smashed into oblivion and the only survivor we had was the guy in the passenger seat of the warthog who jumped out because he wasn't feeling it and our survivor was our idiot every team every clan every group of players has an idiot a lowest on the totem pole the youngest uh, sibling whatever you want to call them and for whatever reason by the grace of God Almighty our idiot survived and now it's time to introduce the squad of course you've got me on the squad I would say I'm probably the squad leader the clan leader the driver whatever you guys know my personality the next person I want to introduce, his name is Duke of Nasty, or just Duke for short. He's the second most talented person on our squad of eight. He was a serious MLG player when that was just first getting to be a thing. He did 2v2s a lot. He loved getting up his uh, official rank, like in the ranked in the Halo playlist. And his father, which this will be important later, hates Halo. He hates video games and he hates the amount of time that his son puts into it. And while he lives in the city, he was raised a little bit country, so when he gets really angry, the country accent comes out, which is important for later. A friend of mine in real life, I know him. The second friend of mine in real life that I'm playing with is a person named Control. He's a talented gamer, but ultimately a casual gamer. He doesn't try to do the MLG thing or go that hard. And he kind of has an inner troll that needs to be fed on occasion. Third on the list, we have Account Master, who was by far the most talented player, truly the one guy that I knew that could have gone pro at the time, but ended up didn't. But he was very, very anal, very toxic, had a bad attitude, pessimistic, and would you know, he's an auditor for the IRS now, so perfect job for him. Our idiot, his name is A Rock, and he really is about as smart as a rock. All of his strategies involving a warthog, that's, that's all he does is drive the stupid hog in this game, and he always comes back empty, like he'll fill up a hog full of people 
people. They'll all die and he'll come back with an empty hog that's on fire and be like, yeah, hop in. We'll do it again. No, we'll not do it again. But he has some sort of incredible luck. The, just the, the rockets that he dodges, the lasers that don't hit him. It doesn't even make sense. Moving on down the list, we have Weapon X, or affectionately named Weapon F, since we all find out that he was incredibly fat, which he eventually would do weightlifting and become incredibly buff. But he was a very, very pessimistic and negative person, but in a funny way. He's sort of a funny pessimistic. And the last two, we have uh, Fatal or Fatal Instinct, who's about a half idiot. He's pretty good at games, but he's got a troll side too. He would eventually get arrested from stealing from all the, like, the kids' booths at Disneyland, like the little games you play. He went to jail for that one. And lastly, we have Neocron, who was the former clan leader, now game developer, and logically minded, but he does have a troll streak as well. And these people are important. So back to the main story. All seven of us are dead. And time is ticking down to seconds here. We have no time to grab the flag, and we look up in a rock. Our idiot, our absolute moron that abandoned us in the middle of the plan, but somehow has the best luck of any person I ever know, walked around the exploding hog and ensuing firefight into their base with none of them noticing, and... <laughs> grabbed the flag and started walking out. This didn't last for long. Of course they noticed the flag was gone. They started looking for him. And uh, But by the time we had all respawned, by the time that he should have been dead, he somehow snuck all the way out of the base and the enemy still had not killed him and still had not found him, which confused the ever-living devil out of me. And we were all screaming at him, cheering at the top of our lungs, go A-Rock, thank God, just awesome, go, good job, come back, play it safe, just hide, we'll come get you. You know, we're all screaming these strats and try and sort this out. Uh, but Neocron, our former clan leader, screams over everybody as loud as he possibly can, Fort Ticonderoga, Fort Ticonderoga, go to Fort Ticonderoga, A-Rock just again and again it was like very driving at home he had to get this message out so we all kind of shut up and just let him yell it a couple of times and a rock says okay i'm going to fort ticonderoga and the rest of us say okay well where is fort ticonderoga what what are you talking about what is this strategy and a rock who has the flag answers us it says hide and seek we do this all the time in custom games i can't talk much more because they're close to me and you gotta remember back in halo 2 when enemies when you would get too close to the enemies and you were talking it would play your voice chat through their headsets it would do a similar thing in call of duty 4 if you had the perk like way back on xbox days that was just the gameplay mechanic like when you would get too close to the enemies they could hear your chat and in this we this was like before party chat and all that was really a thing so we just had the game chat and they were close and he could not talk at all or they would hear him and know that he was nearby and he'd get you know completely wrecked and also halo 2 had unlimited overtime so as long as he held this flag the game would not end and it also had no indicators as to where the flag was so you actually could take a flag and hide and they would have to come and find you in order to end the game and we're doing this on what was at the time the biggest map in the game i think one of the dlc maps would end up being the biggest map in the game but the map was huge and he was hiding in what is obviously going to be one of the least trafficked areas in the entire map if you spawn on the attacking side where you jump the hog across the bridge, there are some stairs that go up a couple levels on the left-hand side of the map, close to a lift, and it's a corner with really nothing in it but a brute shot. Like, nothing is going on up, and there's nothing worth picking up in that corner of the map, just really the brute shot, which isn't, you know, <laughs> top tier by any means. And it's way far out and away from our base, and fairly close to there. So this is a scary situation. After endless, endless arguing about what to do, we all agree that we have to help him out, However, we're getting slain one by one by one by one. The other enemy team is killing us. All our MLG tryhards, all our talented mid casual, all of my tactics, we are getting wrecked. We cannot get over there to escort our idiot out of his hiding spot back to our base so we can win. However, in the grand scheme of things, as we're getting slain slowly, some of us are managing to get to the hiding spot. So, you know, one person gets there and you're like, I don't feel like it's safe to go with just two people. We're going to wait for the whole team to get here. And we do this for about 15 minutes. It took a really long time. We're out there just slogging it out with battle rifles and vehicles and stuff, just trying to get over there to help them out. We just can't do it but after 15 minutes somehow all eight of us end up in this hiding spot and we also end up there with all of the power weapons uh we had a fatal had a rocket launcher i had a sword i want to say duke Na uh, no, maybe it was a count master somebody had a sniper rifle we had all the good stuff but we're still very terrified of going out because we were so far away from our base and they could just kill us and drop the flag and touch it instantly it would be game over and about, you know, half of our guys have an inner troll in them, and we love this. It's pretty funny at this point that 15 minutes have gone by, 
and they haven't found out where we're hiding. So the, the game is epic, but it's also getting kind of funny. So we decided to hide. We decided no more fighting, no more flag escorting. We're going to sit right here in this base, and we're going to hide. We're not going out. We're going to see how long it takes for them to find us. And so we hid, all eight of us huddled in the corner, just like all smooshed around our flag carrier. Like, I don't know, it was like we were we were ducklings and he was the mother goose and we were trying to get as close as we could. One sticky grenade, one rocket, a couple well-placed regular grenades and somebody could have got like a monster kill and wrecked all of us. But we hid there for 20 minutes. No joke, a straight 20 minutes. And we could hear the other people getting close to us and showing up on the radar and yapping at each other. We'd all be quiet. We'd just sit there, we'd all mute our mics and then laugh like mad when they would leave or laugh with the mic muted and it was glorious in all ways that a video game can be glorious and it was fun in all the ways that a game can be fun this was one of my favorite moments just sitting there hiding messing with these people's heads and we held it out for 20 minutes until i noticed a red dot getting closer and closer and closer on that radar and it seemed to be following the same pattern that would be the stairs that you walk up to the second story and I see one of the guys walk up the stairs. I'm looking down on him. He walks up and turns around. He sees us and he says in a voice that I can never emulate, but I will never forget. I knew they were here. Just like, just like this little kid. This is like a, a seven year old kid. Like, oh my God, I knew they were hiding upstairs. I knew they were here. And he throws a grenade, not a sticky, just like a regular frag grenade at us. And it, it was like simultaneously in the best and most epic way you possibly could. All eight of us moved forward away toward him, which would be away from the wall and where the grenade was. We all jumped up at the same time to get a little elevation over the grenade and come straight at this little kid. I couldn't imagine how many bricks he must have just filled his pants with. If you turn the corner and there's eight individually dressed Spartans, they all jump and lunge toward you in unison. And uh, this is where things get a little bit chaotic. I scream, kill him, kill him, attack, you know, all my like clan leader type stuff. I went in as hard as I possibly could because I had an energy sword. And I went and I was just about to hit him. You got that crazy dash in Halo 2, right? And I was just about to hit him when I get smashed in the back by Fatal's rocket. Fatal, half of his idiocy came through at the wrong time and he team killed me with a rocket launcher, blew up the other guy too, and chaos ensued. All seven of the other guys swarmed in on all seven of my guys. Fighting went just, just absolutely crazy. It was a 7v7 fight that I 100% missed. All I saw was bits of it on my death cam and I heard the screaming. We had just... It it was crazy and the flag carrier a rock somehow got two beatdowns our idiot got two flag beatdowns out of all of this kind of chaos but after the dust had settled after the fight was done and i had respawned we had one it was seven versus seven we had three left standing and none of them our idiot had died but somehow he had like mid-air passed the flag i don't know how he even did this but he passed the flag to duke nasty who got it and this is where things get even worse duke of nasty was staying up late to play halo which his dad hated, and he had a bad relationship with his dad, who was a little overbearing, workaholic, among many other things. A little bad to I worked for his... One of my first jobs was working for his dad, so I, I understand how crazy this can get. His dad, I'm not joking, busts into the room and starts screaming at his son about something nonsense. About, you ain't clean, the grit's in the tub, boy, blah, 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 blah. And I think it was something like uh, Duke was supposed to, like, hand scrub the bathtub. But after he did it, his stepmother got in and it wasn't up to her standards and she felt that there was grit in the tub. And like her dad was totally in her pocket and would just like go completely chew out his son over anything. And I can just hear him, but dad, I'm in a clan match, blah, blah, blah. I already washed them grits in that tub. I did that, blah, blah. And his dad's like, I don't give a damn. You get in there and you wash that tub right now. Like, I got the flag, blah, blah. And they're just <laughs> like country blobbing back and forth at each other, which is terrifying to me because the thought of him leaving and then immediately dropping the flag and making us lose is actually getting scary because I want to win this game but then it gets worse the talking turns to screaming and yelling and just back and forth i hate you will you keep on hating me boy and then i just hear this big crash like this big just uh, just loud crash and that's it the mic goes dead i would later find out the next day at school that at some point the argument became physical the xbox was ripped out of the wall and used as a weapon so he completely disconnected. He didn't get to just quit the game and have his character log out. He just like, the, the, the ethernet cable just got ripped right out, disconnected, and it glitched in the strangest way. And you gotta keep in mind, he was carrying the flag at this point. Our flag carrier lagged out 
but froze midair. It was kind of like, it was almost like one of the Iwo Jima people, like his knee was up and it looked like he was planting it in this half kind of jump thing and he only had one foot on the ground that was pretty much floating and he froze and he couldn't move and we all knew that something bad had happened and he wasn't coming back. But if he drops this flag, if something bad happens and we can't pass it, then we can't win the game. We can't score. We can't do anything and we also can't seem to hurt him something has gone really screwball and we can't we can't just blow him up and take the flag we don't know if the enemy can kill him or not but this is getting terrifying we're like it's impossible to win at this point but this is where weapon x had a brilliant idea decided since we can't hurt him we're going to punch him all the way to our base and i'm like weapon has the cholesterol gone to your brain what what in the world are you talking about and he says every time you punch a character they move like a foot right so all we have to do is punch him like a thousand times and we'll move him all the way to our base and this sounded like a terrible idea to me but uh weapon x and neocron the just jumped on and started dual punching him just like punch 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 just smacking this frozen body in midair and the rest of us had to deform like a defensive circle around our lagged out friend to keep him from getting killed thankfully we held on to the rockets and we held on to the sniper rifle not the sword so I remember we had like warthogs parked out there we were running the ghosts we were sniping we we're trying to keep the team brs off of them and we were fighting about as mad and dirty and as just as hard as we could possibly fight and these two glorious glorious clan mates of mine managed to punch our lagged out duke of nasty all the way into our base it took us like five minutes no joke to just punch him and slowly move him all the way and when we got to the flag zone everybody cheered and screamed and it was awesome and it was the best match i've ever had in my life and everybody was super happy about it except of course for duke who was grounded pretty much like forever until the end of time that's a totally different story not for now but that was my favorite moment in all of gaming that was that was the best match of any game i've ever had that was the best thing i've ever done and uh, I had a glorious time. That's just, Moments like this are the reason that I come back to gaming. One of the reasons that it means so much to me. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story. I hope you thought it was funny. If you did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Drifter out.